All right, hello and welcome to a Blender rig check tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, I'm gonna just simply go over some universal steps you can do to make sure that your rigging is properly up to date. Um, if you have a bad rig, <laughs> you'll know about it um, either from in game or from Xeno Viewer. You'll see things like incredibly deformed skeleton bones or model fingers, arms, etc. You'll see parts like missing actual uh, missing uh, faces on the actual model itself. You'll see parts in the wrong places. You might have a lopsided hair file or a shirt that's in like T pose only stuff like that. Um, so if you see any of those issues or see anything that sounds remotely similar to what could be a rigging issue, then you need to fix the rig. So in order to do that properly. I went ahead and made you know some steps you could do to make sure that you do it to the best of your ability. So step one would be to obviously re-import the model with the armature. What does this mean? This means you have to import the EMD files, which is for the actual character model, and then the ESK file, which is for the skeleton, the bones, the armature, call it what you will. They're all referencing the same uh, file type. Now you have to actually import the skeleton with the model files. So if you know you made changes to the model in any way, and you didn't actually import the skeleton, then you're gonna have to redo it, or you're gonna have to just re uh, rig it anyways because it's 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 mandatory. You have to make sure that you have both the actual model files and the skeleton files um, imported into Blender. Well. You actually have to make sure you use it with the EMD FBX tool and then import that 3D object into uh, Blender. Now, assuming you did all that because that's very simple, very basic, very easy. What you need to do is first check the skeleton. Now, this is a vanilla. So this is my vanilla reference. Okay, you always want to use a vanilla reference when, when you can. And in this situation, this is the perfect situation for that because this is a vanilla character model. This is Final Form Mirror, and this is his vanilla uh, skeleton file. Now, what you use vanilla references for is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll go over it anyways. You want to make sure that your mesh data is very similar, if not identical to that of a vanilla file. Now, vanilla files are the ones that are made from the game developers themselves. And the reason why you really want to use a vanilla uh, reference um, is because you know that since the game developers did it, it works in game and that's what you want. So that's the point of that. Now, to make sure that the skeleton is the proper size, like I said, use a vanilla reference. So that means when you look at your character ESK file or your, your um, skeleton files, your armature, whatever you want to call it, you know that it looks something along this size in comparison to the model that it's on. Now, the model is the actual character itself, so that would be like the bust, the wrist, the legs, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so you would just make sure that your skeleton is uh, properly aligned and looks some very similar to the sizing of this, um, this right here that you're seeing on screen. Or if you used to import some other character like Broly or GT Goku and you were working with characters of those similar sizes, then again, you would make sure that your skeleton is of similar nature. Now, that's that's only if you know, you're know you like really inexperienced with rigging, let alone Blender. And that's just to give you some sort of visual. You actually don't need a vanilla reference because it would actually be pretty obvious as soon as you did anything with animations. But... This is to make it like as easy as possible. So keep that in mind. Sometimes the easiest solution is the best one. And so in this case, that would be to use a vanilla reference. So again, make sure that your skeleton is the proper size. Make sure that your model uh, character files is the proper size. Now this is this is a mo um this is like imported um, freshly. Okay, so that means that I did not make any changes after importing this file into Blender. So this is the default character file. I mean, uh, default like character um, size. So very small, you know, takes up about like two, two boxes, as you can see. 
If your model file is like massive, that means that you've messed up somehow. And again, that would be very clear, very obvious as soon as you, you know, went in game or did anything with Xenoviewer um, in terms of skeletons or um, animations checks. Now, after you have double checked the skeleton file size and the model um, uh, size, then you have to make sure that you actually have triangulated faces. Now, if you don't have triangulated uh, faces, let's say you have something like quads or something, then the, the issue you will see in Xenoviewer is like pieces missing. So you'll have like holes where there shouldn't be holes. Um, that could also be something to, um, to do with like the back face coloring, but we'll get to that in a, in a few minutes. So to make sure that your model is properly triangulated, all you have to do is press A to select everything. You have to edit mode with everything selected. Now this is Blender 3.0. Um, this should also work in 2.8. Um, as far as I know, I believe in 2.79, you couldn't have multiple uh, objects selected in enter edit mode. I believe it has to be one at a time. Um, don't quote me on that. I haven't used 2.79 in, a, in a, a good minute. Now, even if you can't select everything at once and go into edit mode, then all you have to do is just select each part one at a time. So like the bus, the rig, um, the wrist, the legs, the boots, stuff like that. Then what you want to do is click on face. Triangulate faces. Boom, you'll see something like quad method beauty and god method beauty. If you want to actually know what that stuff means, you can search it up on any search engine. Since Blender is a free open source software, you'll find plenty of useful uh, tutorials and, and information on its capabilities and features all over the web. Literally, just literally <laughs> Google search or Bing search, whatever. Triangulate faces, blender, you'll find plenty of information about it. Um, yeah, so that that's is, is very simple, very simple. And you can tell that you've done it correctly because they'll actually make triangles, which is, you know, what it means to triangulate faces. So that means that each face consists of uh, three vertexes, uh, well, three vertices. And so this is one, two, three. So that means this is an entire face. So that means this model has been fully triangulated you know it has been because again this is a vanilla reference which means it's already working in in the game itself so that is for triangulated faces now we want to check the normals to do that you have one of two ways really uh the first way the first way would be to turn on um actually but this way you have to actually be in the solid viewport shading we'll do that and then you actually want to turn on back face culling. Now, if there was any problem with this, that means that you would not be able to see certain parts of it. So like if I was to like zoom inside, you'll be something that look you'll see something that looks similar to this. Like just certain parts of the model or the mesh are just like not there. That means that the normals on that part is backwards. Um, then you would just, you know, fix those faces. Another um simpler way to to see that though would be to actually turn on, so let's turn that off. Let's actually turn on face orientation. So you wanna click this viewport overlays button and then turn on face orientation. For anything you see that is red, that means that the normal is facing backwards. So like when we go inside, obviously you'll see a lot of red because the it would be facing the, the inside. So you see a blue model that means that your faces are really perfect very good very good that's what you want to see that's an easy way to check the normals um outside of that you want to check your vertex groups now if you don't really know the user interface of blender this tutorial does a pretty good job of just explaining like the you know the um very basic aspects of it, at least for what you'll need in terms of rigging. But if you wanted to do something more involved with rigging, like maybe a custom rig, um, well, actually a custom rig, you would just take everything. You could just literally add a bone and then just make sure that it's actually applied to the armature properly. So that's not difficult at all, actually. The, the, the parts that you actually want to make sure you have a good understanding of Blender and is you, um, user interface would be if you're doing anything well, actually uh, model work, like you're remodeling or maybe, you know, building such, uh, something custom and you want it to work for, um, you know, Xenoverse 2, 
Uh, maybe you're doing something with animation, stuff like that. You want to actually make sure you understand how to use Blender. That's like one of the biggest problems I see in regards to rigging. It's not even that the, um, you know people have like issues with rigging. It's just that they want to fix their issues without actually knowing how to do anything in Blender because they think Blender and then they see well, if they, whenever they see anything Blender related, they assume overly complex. They think bad and bad is no, no. And no, no means no do. And no do means I don't want to do. So then they ask someone else to do it for them. And, you know, it's really unnecessary because Blender is not, I mean, it's a it's 3D model and software, really not complicated, especially um, for the stuff that you want to do in relations to character modding or, you know, clothed models, stuff like that. Very simple. It takes you know, a good 15%, maybe 20% of the two of the total features that Blender is capable of to actually do what you're going to be doing. Actually, I would more say about 10% tops. But yeah, that's a topic for discussing another day. Now, um, to check the actual vertex groups, because that is the part we're on, you want to make sure you have part of the model selected. So right now I have the bus selected, and then you want to go to object data properties. Now, these vertex groups are obviously fully rigged because, again, this is a vanilla reference, so it means it works properly. And to see what these actually do, you want to be inside of weight paint mode. So click on object mode, click weight paint. Now we're in weight paint mode. Now, obviously, right now, the vertex group I am on is for the cheek bottom. And it's not talking about the butt cheek, so it's talking about the face cheek. You can tell because there's an F in front of it. Now, if I'm on a part of a model, that does not have the associated bone, then when I look at the vertex group, I won't see anything. Um, that, that obviously makes the most sense because you know you would not have a, a facial cheek rigged on the bus. There's no need for that. So what you would want to do is actually go to parts that would be on the model part that you selected. Now by default, you know there are certain things that are going to be there unnecessarily, like this vertex group, and you know just leave it. Just leave it um, until you actually know what you're doing. Um, but yeah, so start off with the BC pelvis. Now we can see that there is some rigging for the BC pelvis on the front and the back. Um, then you would just go through it. Now we see you know, the chest as well, properly rigged, the shoulder. This is how you check your uh, vertex groups. So this is perfect. This is a really fully rigged uh, bust. If I wanted to check my legs, do the same thing, go into weight paint mode, start with the top one, then just really just scroll through it. You see that this has been fully rigged. Even the ones like um, the leg helper, our helper, right? You can actually see that that has good rigging here, perfect. That means this is done perfectly. That's what we want. So this is what it means to check your vertex groups. Um, if you see proper weight assignment, which means that you see coloring, then that means that you have proper weight um, on your vertex groups. Um, you might need to actually um, weight paint. Like let's say if you're doing like a, a custom model or for whatever reason, you just want to weight paint it yourself um, without weight transfers. Um, you would have to, again, obviously be in weight paint mode. Make sure you have a vertex group. If you need to add a vertex group, you just click this plus button, name it. You need to name it to whatever the associated bone is. So let's say I had something like um, like a wing bone, and it was called like BC um, wing left, right? That means that this is a custom bone. I added that myself. So that means on this vertex group, I'm going to have an area where the, where the uh, wing bone would be, and then you would just... Make sure you're on like um, add or draw or whatever. And then you would just weight paint it yourself. Now this video won't go over weight painting. It will just go over, you know, what weight painting is and that's what it is. But to weight paint properly, you would need a whole different uh, workflow video for that. Um, that's just because I really wanted to um, save time and not do that in this video because I would have to really rush it and it was just would not really serve its purpose. So I can go ahead and undo that. Okay. Now, for whatever reason, let's say your weight painting is properly done and yet you're still seeing some issues, you could try the limit totals feature of weight painting. So again, make sure you're in weight paint mode and then you click on weights and then you click on limit total. Now the default one is fine. This just means that it will take any um, 
access number of ways and just remove it. That way it's not, you know, doing too much. Essentially, that's sort of like a really simplistic version of what the uh, tool does. The default settings work fine if I haven't said that already. Um, you would just do that for like every model part. So if I was to go on ahead and limit uh, totals for the bus, click on weights, totals, boom, wrist, weight, total, boom, stuff like that. Easy, very easy. Then you would have to, so that was, that was basically everything. Other than that, now at this point, that means that before I export, I know that my model size is perfect. My skeleton size is perfect. Uh, vertex groups, triangulated faces, limit uh, totals, the weight paying is perfect, or at least really well, um, if, you know, if you're doing it yourself. And then at this point, I, that means I have to export it. Now you're going to have to have the actual proper export settings. Now to do that, the export settings have been pinged in the Citadel um, modeling um, section. Very easy to find, very easy. Um, I can try to pull it up right here. If you was to go to like this one, right? This is, if you go to pin messages, this one is back from like, um, what's that? March 9th, 2019, very old been here for a very long time this is what you would use for dario's um export settings you could also find the one for glanix the same way you just make sure that your export settings looked very similar to this if you do that that is perfect now another thing is when you're actually now assuming that you have the proper export settings and then you exported it from blender you would have to make sure that you have the um the 3d object that you just exported selected with the character's uh, skeleton. Um, and that is to make sure that the rigging is, again, still done um, correctly. You won't have to do that for a Glanix uh, um, EMD FBX tool, but you will have to do that if you're using Dario's. Now, if you want to understand the difference between the two, you can check in the Citadel. Plenty of conversations have gone over it. Um, basically, though, quick summary, very quick, is that you will use Dario's if doing anything with modeling. And anything with animations or ESK work, then you would use Oglanix. Um, but yeah. So that's it, folks. Really went over it as fast as I could. It took a took about 20 minutes, but I really wanted to go into details about certain things. This is like a quick how to fix, you know, your rig universally. Um, yeah, this could be used for any character, any clothing item, stuff like that. This is what you would want to do to make sure you have proper uh rigging uh set up. Now, if you were to do all of this and you still saw issues with it, then that means you, uh, let's say like you didn't see any issues on, on, among like initial import into Xenoviewer, but you see certain things on like certain animations, then you probably have to check the animation itself in Blender. Again, that will be, uh, you know, outside the bounds of this tutorial. But yeah, so hopefully you learn some things. Um, again, make sure you actually understand how to use Blender. Um, if I, if I haven't said it already, I am linking a donut tutorial inside of the description. That way you can familiarize yourself with Blender's user interface, and then you can easily, easily, easily do all of this, um, stuff. So thank you for watching and hopefully now this will help you fix all your rigging troubles.